join me in officially starting our session off with the Pledge of Allegiance to our flag. I pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you all. All right, before you sit down, David, we have a proclamation. And Lori, I believe you're coming up for this. If you'll join me. We have a proclamation um, for Spring Severe Weather Awareness Week here in Claremont County. Again, it's March 20th through 26th. It says, whereas Claremont County residents face a yearly threat of spring storms that include severe thunderstorms, high winds, flooding, flash flooding, and tornadoes, whereas it is incumbent upon government at all levels to promote effective emergency preparedness and management practices that will better protect the lives and property of their citizens. Whereas the Ohio Committee for Severe Weather Awareness is committed to educating the public on the methods of preparedness in response to the national hazards that affect Ohio. And whereas Ohio's new media and state and local governments have the ability to work together to inform the public about severe weather safety. Whereas these joint educational campaigns have proven effective in educating the citizens of Ohio about the actions they can take to prepare for and respond to so, um, spring severe weather events. Now therefore be proclaimed that we, the Board of Claremont County Commissioners, do hereby proclaim the week of March 20th through 26, 2016 as Spring Severe Weather Awareness Week in Claremont County in honor and recognition of our citizens and the vital contributions they make to the safety and well-being of our community. Signed by the Board of County Commissioners, myself, David Jubal, and Ed Humphrey. So on behalf of the board, I want to present this to you and thank you all for what you do. And I'm sure you have a few words. Thank you. Lori? Thank you. I'm filling in for Pam. Yeah. Go ahead. Okay. Um, the, um, the program itself is um, basically, as it stated, to educate the citizens on um, the, the dangers of the flooding and the tornadoes. Um, the big promotion again this year is the Turnaround Don't Drown, which is the, um, you know, if you see water on a roadway, you know, oh, I can make it, you know, there's only a little bit of water. Um, it only takes a few inches of water to push a car over. So that's our big promotion for the years, just to make sure that people are aware and educated on the dangers. That's awesome. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Do we want to get a picture? Oh, okay. <coughs> Boy, you know the routine. I know the routine. <laughs> Been around here long enough to see this. All right, um, item number two on our agenda is resolution 33-16 uh, for payment of bill or bills in the amount of $2,616,827.60. Since is there a motion to adopt the resolution? So moved. Second. Mr. Hubel. Yes. Mr. Proud. Yay. Connie, item three, please. Item number three is the recommendation of Judy Eshman, the Director of the Department of Job and Family Services, with the concurrence of Stephen H. Rabel, County Administrator, to execute an amendment to the purchase of service agreement by and between the County of Claremont, Ohio, and Cornell Abractus Group Incorporated out of Shelby, Ohio. Previously ratified by the Board of County Commissioners on January 20, 2016, which represents a revision to the agreement commencement date from January 25, 2016 to January 14, 2016, with said purchase of service agreement to be effective for the revised period of January 14, 16 through December 31, 2016, 
with all of the terms and conditions of the original purchase of service agreement to remain in full force and effect. I mean, what was it? I forgot what the, we were purchasing here. Residential treatment services. This is actually uh, the first contract with this particular provider, Cornell Abraxas Group. And there was uh, one specific child that was identified that could benefit from their specialized services. Mm -hmm. However, there was a miscommunication on the placement date. And we, we were unaware of that until after it went through session. So this corrects that. Is there a motion then to execute um, the amendment to the purchase of service agreement between the county and Cornell Abraxas Group as recommended? So moved. Second. Mr. Ubel. Yes. Mr. Pratt. Yay. And item four, please. Recommendation of Judy Eshman, Director, Department of Job and Family Services, with the concurrence of Stephen H. Raybolt, County Administrator, to execute the First Amendment to the Industrial Building Lease Agreement by and between the Board of County Commissioners, Claremont County, Ohio, on behalf of the Claremont County Department of Job and Family Services, the Administrative Entity and Fiscal Agent for the Southwest Ohio Regional Training Center, and First Industrial Investment to the LLC, whose administrative our corporate office is located in Chicago, Illinois. Previously ratified by the Board of County Commissioners on September the 11th, 2013, through an industrial building lease assignment agreement by and between Claremont County, Ohio and Butler County, Ohio, for the lease of office space located at 4 420 Wards Corner Road, Suite J, Loveland, Ohio, to be utilized by the Southwest Ohio Regional Training Center employees. With said First Amendment, to the industrial building lease agreement to extend the agreement for an additional three-year term effective for the period of May the 1st, 2016 through April 30th, 2019, as well as for additions and modifications as outlined therein, with all other terms and conditions set forth in the original industrial building lease agreement and assignment thereto to remain in full force and effect, except as expressly modified by or inconsistent with the terms of the first is there a motion then to execute the referenced first amendment to the industrial building <coughs> agreement as recommended? I'll make a motion for item five or four. Second. Mr. Ubel? <laughs> yes. Mr. Proud? Yay. Thanks, Connie. Andy, item five, please. Good morning, Andy Kukta. It's a recommendation to authorize the county auditor to issue a check in the amount of $1,700,000 of the general fund balance of the designated conveyance fee revenues to the Claremont County CIC, Inc., representing the county's contribution for the CIC's functions under Chapter 1724 of the Higher Revised Code, pursuant to and in compliance with Section 14 of the agreement by and between, the Claremont, between Claremont County and the Claremont County CIC, Inc., which was ratified by the Board of County Commissioners on 11-2304. So these funds are needed uh, for planned road and infrastructure improvements for the South Afton Commerce Park, as well as other general CIC operating expenses in 2016. And this is discussed last year as part of the overall transfer of funds uh, for 2016. Is there a motion then to um, authorize the county auditor to issue the check as recommended? So moved. Second. Mr. Ubel? Yes. Mr. Proud? Yay. Andy, how's the uh, South Afton Park Commerce Park coming? Slowly and lots of lots of uh, kind of upfront work that has to go on right now. Everything from farming lease contracts to getting some trees taken down to you know, working with the transportation improvement district to start working on uh, getting an engineer under contract to do the actual construction design work for the first phase of road and infrastructure work. So uh, there's a lot of stuff on our plate that we're very busy with right now. I know we got some good press out of it. Have, have any phone calls come in as a result of that? Uh, yes, we were actually talking to a few Claremont County companies before we got the press on it um, about their need for a new space, and a couple more phone calls uh, uh, came as a result of the press uh, coverage that we got, and we're continuing to talk to those companies. Good. Well, that's a long-term play. So It is. Yeah. Are we still on target for beginning construction this fall? Yes. Awesome. Yep. Good. Thank you. All right, item six, please. Item six, the recommendation, John Cascaden, Director of Department of Public Safety Services, with my concurrence to approve a request to advertise for bids for HVAC maintenance and repair services for HVAC equipment located at Claremont County Tower Sites, pursuant to specifications therefore, and to authorize the clerk to place legal notice in the newspaper of general circulation on 317, scheduling a non-mandatory pre-bid meeting on Thursday, 324. With bids to be received uh, until 2 p.m. local time on Thursday, 3:31, the Office of Board of County Commissioners. 
Is there a motion then to approve the request to advertise for bids um, and also authorizing the clerk to place a legal notice in the newspaper as recommended? So moved. Second. Schubel? Yes. Mr. Proud? Yay. Item 7, please. God bless you. Item 7 is a recommendation of Gary Bryant, Director of Court Services of the Claremont County Juvenile Court. My concurrence to execute a client agreement by between the County of Claremont and Renaissance Learning, Inc. of Wisconsin for the provision of application hosting services for the Renaissance Learning, Inc. software, including Star Reading, Accelerator Reader, Star Math, and Accelerated Math, to be utilized by the Claremont County Juvenile Detention Center, and further to provide software maintenance services for said RLI software as outlined for the Rider Software Maintenance Agreement. Attest there to me a part thereof, an amount not to exceed four thousand one hundred and sixty seven dollars, effective four one of sixteen through three thirty one of twenty seventeen. So motion then to execute the referenced um, client agreement as recommended. So moved. Second. Mr. Ubel. Yes. Mr. Pratt. Yay. You're back? I'm back. Item eight, please. Item 8 is a recommendation to adopt Resolution 34-16, resolving to authorize the Claremont County Transportation Improvement District to oversee, manage, and acquire the necessary runway, right-of-way, in order to proceed with the bidding and construction of the Claremont County Airport Improvement Project, and to uh, provide the Claremont County TID with additional funding in the amount of $1 million to facilitate and provide for the commencement, management, acquisition of runway, right-of-way, and construction through completion and inspection of the Claremont County Airport Improvement Project. This is pursuant to the Intergovernmental Agreement ratified by the Board of County Commissioners with the TID on 8-15 of 2006 and all amendments relative thereto. Uh, this is the absolute final step that we need to take uh, to uh, have the TID be able to proceed with that airport <coughs> runway improvement project that was, um, we had the, the funding awarded or notice of award from the Capitol Bill project uh, in 2014. and. Uh, it should be on the March 21st controlling board agenda for final release of those funds. Uh, so once those funds are released, we can tell the TID that uh, all the funding is in place and they have all the authorization they need and they can move forward with planning uh, and uh, constructing that runway extension. What's uh, the time frame on that, Andy? Not the money, but in terms of yeah. the TID doing the work? Uh, it's going to depend on the final right-of-way uh, acquisition. Uh, on how long that process takes. I think that once once that is done, it's a relatively short and defined piece of infrastructure that has to be built. Um, the other unknown factor that I'm, I'm not going to be comfortable putting a time frame on it is any FAA approvals. Uh, the FAA has to be involved with this project unlike any other typical TID project. And um, so we're making those connections right now and starting those discussions up in anticipation of starting that project. Well, the nice thing is they have the regional office right here in Claremont. That's correct. I've been in contact with mm -hmm. the FAA out of uh, Detroit, which is our, our oversight area, and uh, there are a number of hoops that we will have to jump through. Now, hopefully we can do those concurrently along with the process so that it doesn't delay it any longer, but there are a number of hoops we have to jump through. And a lot of that clearing is all done in terms of on both sides mm -hmm. of the runway. The That's correct. Trees. That's correct. So hopefully it will go without a problem. Yep. Is there a motion then to adopt resolution number 34-16 as recommended? Uh, so moved. Second. Mr. Hubel? Yes. Mr. Proud? Yay. Thanks, Andy. Item 9, please. Item 9 is a recommendation of Tom Iger, Assistant County Minister, with my concurrence to amend Appendix 4.10 of the Claremont County Personal Policy and Procedures Manual to reflect the 2016 schedule rates of pay for county employees with a 2% increase in the minimum rate and a 1% increase in the maximum rate and a corresponding change in medium rates for employees not covered by a schedule of rates of pay within a collective bargaining agreement as outlined in Exhibit A, attached there too, made a part thereof, effective 12-21-2015, and update as necessary the internet links and appendices accordingly. Is there a motion then to make the uh, amendment to the reference appendage as recommended? Uh, I'll make a motion for item nine. Second. Mr. Ubel. Yes. Mr. Proud. Yay. Item 10, please. Item 10, the recommendation of Tom Iowa, Assistant County Administrator, with my concurrence to authorize the preparation and processing of record-only personnel action forms for all eligible non-bargaining employees under the jurisdiction of the Board of County Commissioners to reflect the salary slash wage increases based on merit performance evaluations and calculations as prepared for the evaluation period of 1-1-15 through 12-31-15, and further to direct all departments under the jurisdiction of the Board of County Commissioners to prepare the munis entries accordingly in and as it relates thereto, with the respective increases as outlined in the matrices attached thereto, made a part thereof to be effective 12, 21, and 15. 
Is there a motion then to authorize the preparation and the processing of the reference record of um, personnel action forms and to have all departments um, enter the necessary things into MUNIS as recommended? So moved. Second. Mr. Hubel. Yes. Mr. Proud. Yay. Suki, item 11, please. Good morning. Good morning. Um, item 11 is our financials for this week. First, we have supplemental appropriations. In the Board of Elections, there are a few, and they actually net to a, de a reduction. First, in their regular salaries, $22,939. This is to adjust for the, the salary actions. Um, then in their fringe benefits, $8,187, which is the fringe associated with those salary increases. And in their other expenses, a reduction of $72,254 based on revised estimates for running the election this year. Then we have in the concealed weapons licensing fund, $5,000 increase in overtime. This is the, um, I believe this is the fifth concealed carry licenses are good for five years, I believe. And it was about five years ago when we started those. So they're seeing more of an influx as people are renewing their CCWs. Good. So the uh, general fund from the Board of Elections, that money's that coming back into the That'll actually, budgeted for Right. It. They had they had requested a very high level for their uh, election expenses, and we went ahead and let them have that. And reevaluating it in order to be able to do the salary actions, um, they reduced what they had originally expected for their Good. election expenses. Then we have a budget transfer from Child Support Enforcement Bargaining Unit salaries to Child Support Enforcement Overtime, $21,568.98 that they need for a project they're working on. And they have it available from vacancies. Is there a motion then to approve the supplemental appropriations and the budget transfer as recommended? So moved. Second. Hubel. Yes. Brad. Yay. Thank you, Suki. I believe we have an add-on. As it turns out, sir, we have two add-ons. Okay. Both related to the same item. Uh, first one, you should have both of them in front of you, I believe. As a recommendation of Tom Eigel, Assistant County Administrator, with my concurrence to adopt resolution number 35-16, resolving to abolish the duties and responsibilities of the Criminal Justice Coordinating Council, heretofore established by the Board of County Commissioners on 3 one 2007 and subsequently modified on 219-14 and 2 15 to amend resolution number 224-94, previously ratified by the Board of County Commissioners on 12-16 of 94 and amended on 8-5-2012, which established the Claremont County Local Community Corrections Planning Board and the composition thereof. This is to rename the Claremont County Local Community Corrections Planning Board to now be known as the Criminal Justice Coordinating Council and to modify its composition to include three additional representatives as identified. For total revised number of 24 representatives pursued in compliance with section 514934 of the Ohio Revised Code, as amended by the 129th General Assembly, effective 930 of 2011, with revised composition therefore effective upon ratification therefore. We're effectively uh, merging these two agencies uh, into one agency, which meets the statutory requirements. Is there a motion then to adopt resolution number 35 16 as recommended. So moved. Second. Mr. Hubel. Yes. Mr. Proud. Yay. And the next action, please. This is the designation of appointments to the Criminal Justice Coordinating Council as just ratified. Recommendation of Joe Ellison, Chief Probation Officer, Claremont County Municipal Court, Adult Probation Department, and Julie Fry, Director of the Claremont County Court of Common Police Adult Probation Department, with my concurrence to appoint the following members to serve on the Criminal Justice Coordinating Council pursuant to Resolution 224.94, previously ratified by Board of County Commissioners on 12-16-94 and subsequently amended on 8-15-12-3916 and in compliance with Section 5149.34 of the Ohio Revised Code. First, we have in the field of Judiciary, Jason Nagel, effective 3-9-16 through 5-13-17. In the field of Judiciary, Judge Herman, effective 3-9-16 through 5-13-17 and county administrator or his designee, which is myself, effective 3, 9, and 16 through 5, 13 of 17. Is there a motion then to make um, the referenced appointments as recommended? So moved. Second. Mr. Hubel. Yes. Mr. Proud. Yay. Do we have anything That's else? That's all we have, sir. All right. We'll take a five-minute recess for the minutes to be prepared. Um, again, before we... Um, take care of the minutes. I know we have some special guests here, and Jamie, you want to introduce? Sure. I am Jamie Kenner, and this is.
this is my son, Ethan Kenner. And go ahead and tell him about yourself and what you're doing. I'm Ethan Kenner. I'm here because of my communication center bench. This is actually one of my requirements. And I'm from Troop 452 out of St. Thomas Morgan. That's awesome. And what's the next step after this? Um, I have a couple more Eagle badges that I have to work on. One of them is citizenship in the nation and then citizenship in the community. I have to work on those two and a couple ones I can't name off right now. And then I have my Eagle project and pretty much every other requirement. Is there anybody else in your family who's an Eagle Scout? First one. Oh, that's awesome. I'll tell you as we get ready to close our session, why don't you come on up here? Sorry that uh, Commissioner Humphrey wasn't here. Yes. I think he was an Eagle Scout as well as his grandkids. So. Here, buddy, get up here. Yeah, I'll let you stand. Yeah. And we're going to get ready to close out our yeah. session. So, all right, with that, um, is there a motion to approve the minutes today's session? I'll approve the. Look at this. I didn't know you were even here. <laughs> I don't think any one of us said nay, did we, Bob? No. I don't think so. All right. I'll uh, make a motion to approve the minutes from March uh, 9th of 2016. I'll second. Mr. Yubel? Yes. Mr. Proud? Yay. Is there any other business at all? No, sir. Is there a motion to adjourn? I'll make the motion to adjourn. I'll second. Mr. Yubel? Yes. Mr. Proud? Yay. All right. Tell us we're adjourned. All right, the meeting is a trick. All right, there you go, buddy. <laughs> All right, good job.